Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 24th, 2022 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. First, let me say a big thank you to everyone who came out to visit us for Bird of Prey Days and also a thank you to all of the volunteers who helped out, especially those who helped run the Hawkwatch. Today was mostly sunny with winds that started out easterly and then shifted northeast and then eventually back to east. We did have a pretty decent flight of sharp-shinned hawks and northern harriers and falcons and other things that didn't mind the lake breeze, but we unfortunately did not get very many broad-winged hawks at all, just because of those winds pushing them farther inland, and I'll talk about that in more detail towards the end of this video. Okay, let's take a look at the bird photos from today. Here we have a group of three northern shovelers. Here we have a sharp-shinned hawk, the first of many sharp-shinned hawked photos that you'll see in this video, because we had about 350 total today. Here's an American kestrel. We had our first of year palm warblers today. And here we have a yellow-rumped warbler, and notice the yellow here in the, on the side of the bird. Here's another sharp-shinned hawk migrating overhead. Notice the squared-off tail. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle, quite faded underneath just from the sun bleaching these feathers. Here's another sharp-shinned hawk, and notice how small the head is, barely sticks out past the wings. Here's another adult sharp-shinned hawk. And here's a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here's another sharp-shinned hawk. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of them in this. And actually, like I said, we had almost 350 sharp-shins, and we only had two Cooper's hawks today. And here's another sharpie with a very squared-off tail. Here's a different bird. Here's a light morph rough-legged hawk. Here's another American kestrel. Here's another sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a bigger falcon. This is a peregrine falcon, and it's an adult. We can tell that because it has the horizontal barring on the breast rather than vertical streaking. Here's another light morph rough-legged hawk. And here's what might be called an intermediate morph or a dark morph rough-legged hawk. It's not the jet black that we see on the uh, adult males, but this is a definitely darker underneath than the, the light morphs that we saw today. And here we have a juvenile northern harrier. Here's the eBird checklist for today. Total of 66 species. So overall a decent day, a couple different things around. A couple first of years, which we'll discuss in a minute. Let's take a look at hawk count for our migrant raptor totals. Today we had 324 turkey vultures, 4 osprey, 15 bald eagles, 30 northern harriers, 341 sharp-shinned hawks, 2 cooper's hawks, 4 broad-winged hawks, 7 red-tailed hawks, 4 rough-legged hawks, 28 American kestrels, 1 merlin, and 1 peregrine falcon for a total of 761 migrants today. We had two new species for the season today, which were palm warbler and white-throated sparrow. Now before we jump into the forecast, I just wanted to briefly discuss the situation with the broad-winged hawks today. So we only had four broad-winged hawks today, but let me show you the totals from Derby Hill. Here's the hawk count report for Derby Hill Bird Observatory, which is over near Oswego. It's in Mexico, New York. And if we take a look at their number, 19,335 broad-winged hawks, which was a new record for them. So how is it possible that we only saw four broad-winged hawks the whole day and they had more than 19,000? Well, let's take a look at the winds if we take a look at windy.com. I apologize if the recording freezes a little bit while I'm doing this. Uh, trying to run the screen recording software plus windy sometimes makes my computer run slow. But if we take a look at the winds, so we're up here north of Rochester, 
and you can see that we had winds coming off of the lake. However, farther south in New York, the winds were light and southerly. So what was happening is that the Broadwings were migrating, heading north, and they got to a point where they were encountering these northerly winds. They were pushing them south. So the Broadwings never reached the lake shore. I got reports from people in the city of Rochester in the afternoon that they were seeing large numbers of Broadwings migrating. So it seems like the Broadwings got about five miles away from the shoreline, and that's where the balance point was between the southerly winds and the northeast lake breeze. So that's why we got so few broadwinged hawks along the lake shore. Now, if you contrast that over here near Oswego, where Derby Hill is, you can see they had southeast winds, which is perfect for them because a southeast wind pushes those broadwings right up, hugging the shoreline and right over their lookout. So we had overall poor winds for the birds that were soaring, like broadwinged hawks, because it blew them away from the shoreline whereas Derby Hill had favorable southeast winds that brought all of the broad-winged hawks directly over them. With that in mind, let's take a look at the forecast for tomorrow. Tomorrow will be mostly cloudy in the morning, then thunderstorms later, high around 70, winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So this is a great wind direction and a pretty good speed, not too strong, not too light, and... I think that we really have the possibility to have a pretty good morning tomorrow. Um, it's going to depend on how gloomy the conditions are, how rainy it is when the rain hits, but it's looking like they're not really calling for showers in the morning now, and there might even be a bit of sunshine. So if that's the case, if it turns out to be a half decent uh, weather conditions in the morning, we have the right winds. Obviously, there were a lot of broad wings on the move today, and there should be more in the pipeline. So it seems like some factors may be coming together that uh, even though we missed all the broad wings today, that we might end up with a decent flight tomorrow. So I would take a look at the weather in the morning and if things are looking half decent, not too rainy, um, I would seriously consider coming out to the Hawk Watch because there is the possibility of a big flight tomorrow. And also um, with it being a little cloudier, and just the overall conditions, the flight might be more low level, which can be a lot more satisfying, even if you see fewer birds than seeing thousands of birds when they're way off in the distance. So tomorrow, possibility of a big flight. I'm not promising anything, um, but the uh, if the forecast holds, it, it looks like it could be a good day. But again, I would check in the morning just to, to see how the forecast has changed. For Tuesday, we're looking at cloudy skies with a high around 50, winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so fairly strong winds, and westerly winds are an okay direction, cloudy skies are not the best, but they're okay, so yeah, might be light to moderate migration. For Wednesday, we're looking at cloudy early, then partly cloudy and windy, high in the low 40s, winds west-northwest at 20 to 30 miles per hour, so those are just strong winds from an overall unfavorable direction. So I wouldn't expect much to be migrating. And that's kind of the theme this week is a lot of days have strong winds, which usually aren't good for seeing a lot of broad winged hawks. Broad wings like days with light winds so that they can soar on the thermals and form big kettles, which is what we like. So not sure uh, how many days this week we'll get good flights, but uh, we'll keep an eye as we get closer. All right, that's it for today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of these daily updates from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.